Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome to the Herb of the Day show. I'm your homie Herb, man. Go tell somebody, go tell somebody your homie is on. We bringing you that fire, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All of you guys, all you friends, all of you supporters, we thank you for all of the support thus far. If you are new to the channel, uh, go ahead and hit that logo on your screen right there and uh, hit that notification bell so that you never, ever miss a daily episode of Herb of the Day Show Live with your homie Herb, man. All right, all right, all right. So our Herb of the Day, if you know anybody dealing with hypothyroidism, man, this is going to be the herb for them, and this is going to be the video for them. Without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, I'm shutting my screen. If you guys can't see the screen, please let me know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're rocking with the best, man. I'm your host, Herb, man. This is the Herb of the Day show. Now, what is our Herb of the Day? All right, our Herb of the Day is bugleweed, all right? And it originates out of Europe. And it is a perennial plant um, and it grows in temperate climate. So it doesn't like it when it's hot, nor if it's too cold. All right. And it grows to about the height of about 60 centimeters, which is not a very, very tall plant. And of course, as you can see, it is very, very beautiful to the eye. OK, now, what are some of the historical uses of bugleweed? How do we understand bugleweed? Well, bugleweed is um, it, does, it has another common name. It's called water whorehound, all right? And it's also called gypsy wart in some places, all right? Now, the, um, and pretty much that's kind of what it goes by, either the gypsy wart or the water hound. Um, now, the really, the name scientifically it wants to go by is like Copus virgin, virgin, vir, virginicus, Lycopus virginicus or either Lycopus europeus. Now, you know, either one of those, but I would just stick with either the bugleweed. That's probably the best way for you to dial this in. Now, some of the parts that are used here mostly for medicinal uses are going to be in the dried herb format, all right? And so we always know when we see the dried herb, it's going to pretty much mean that you're going to probably have to uh, uh, simmer this in a tea, okay? Now, what are some of the historic, what are some of the actions, excuse me, that uh, bugleweed has? We see that it is a cardioactive diuretic. Now, what that means is that it also promotes the urinary flow, okay? But it also has a connection to your cardiovascular system as well. So that's a unique thing about bugleweed here, which is why it's going to be very good for some other things as we go further. It also has an action of increasing force of my myocardial contraction and reducing your heart rate. OK, so if you're dealing with, you know, speeding up or, or kind of that, that that jumpy heart, so to speak, you may want to definitely look at this. Another term for it is palpitations. OK, and it also has a peripheral vasoconstrictor. All right. Now, this is going to constrict your blood vessels. All right. Now, that is going to be something that is very unique to it as well. Also, as antitussive, it also is a hypoglycemic, which is very good at bringing the uh, sugar levels low. Uh, and it also is a sedative as well as anti-hemorrhagic. So it's going to stop bleeding. It's going to relax, calm you down. It also acts as a, a thyrostatic and a narcotic, a very mild narcotic. So as you can see, bugleweed has a lot of different things that it does here. Now, it also acts as a mild contraceptive containing lithospermum acid, which blocks gonadotropic hormones of the anterior pituitary. So it has a lot to do with the brain, which again, the thyroid glands are just messengers between your, uh, between your brain and to your hormones and to your adrenal glands and all of that. So with this affecting your thyroid, it's also going to be very good for the hormones and your adrenals and everything like that. It should kick back in. Now, the historical uses of it is it was used to reduce rapid heartbeat from overactive thyroid, okay? And this is why it's going to be good for hyperthyroidism, all right? Anybody dealing with that out there, 
this is going to be your go-to because of that very very thing and it also reduces high pulse rate as we just said before um, and it also raises blood sugar levels in diabetics now this is not going to be something you're going to really want to have if you're a diabetic so you want to be careful if you are uh, or thyroid issues and a diabetic and dealing with bugleweed okay as soon as you see that right there that's what you want to be careful about this is going to raise your blood sugar levels okay it also acts as a internal hemorrhaging so if you have ever had that um then historically bugleweed has been good for that bleeding from the lungs um high blood pressure and things of that nature is always going to be good for that but again be careful if you are diabetic dealing with bugleweed. Now, some of the famous combinations with bugleweed here is bugleweed with Lily Valley. You can do two to one ratio. And that's for your heart cases, again, because it, it does affect the heart uh, and the blood vessels, okay? Um, and then you can also combine bugleweed with elecampane. And you do this in equal parts to tackle uh, tuberculosis if you're having issues with that. Also, too, you can combine bugleweed with valerian um and that is going to be good for the thyrotoxins all right so uh if you got any of that type of stuff you want to look into bugleweed all right now how they ask us to prepare it is as usual three times a day if you need it you're going to do it in a tea format about one heaping teaspoon to one cup of boiling water you allow it to infuse for about 10 minutes remember you're dealing with dried herbs so you don't have to boil it do about a half a cup three times a day also, too, they recommend you do it in a tincture format. We know that a tincture format is the most potent format that you can do with herbs. You do a one-part to five-part ratio, and you do it in about 45% alcohol, and you can dose this at two to six milliliters in water. All right, so just remember, guys, that I am not a doctor nor a physician, so please consult your physician before utilizing any of the herbs you see here on Leaf about an essential channel. But before that, we always say research everything before you put it into your body now look at these beautiful flowers here i mean these are just some very very beautiful robust plants um remember always to to look at your leaves here to the right so you can always uh, make sure you got that 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 leaf signature to know that you're dealing with bugleweed because there's a lot of plants here and you can go through the videos and see that has these purples and these blues here and and, and also to some of these bud formats so it's going to be very, very critical for us to really learn the signature, especially right here in this middle picture, learn the signature leaves there. All right. And that's how you can really determine how good and, and what the plant is uh, good for. Um, some of the other things that bugleweed is good for um, are going to be your usuals, going to be good for things like um, gout. Uh, it's been known to be good for things like gout. Um, but again, you know, um, I mean, you can use it for gout, but a lot of times when you're having gout, you really got diabetes and stuff and all that type of stuff. So it's going to be one of those things to where hopefully you're in the condition to use it. If you're only dealing with hyperthyroidism, then you may can just go ahead and do this. But of course, it's going to be good for cough and, and uh, you know, any, any type of um, anxiety, breast pain, bone pain, um, you know, it, it's got a few different things, but mostly what we suggest you use this for, it's going to be most effective for hyperthyroidism, okay? And again, you can probably try to use it for gout. Just remember that if you're diabetic, you want to watch out for this particular herb, all right? So this has been the herb of the day, man. We sure do appreciate all of you guys for the support. And yes, the channel is still growing, but we're going to continue to need your help. So please stay connected and join the family in all of our various ways to do that. Also, too, you can always check out our products at www.leafabodyessentials.com. Yes, we do have products, but the education on this station is truly the, the, the number one product. We wanted to make sure that our best product was for free, and you can't get no better than the education, man. So we appreciate all of you guys for continuing to support the station. So go tell somebody, go tell somebody about your homie, Herb Man, man. We love you, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. And this has been your episode of Herb of the Day. Until next time, peace. Yes, sir.